All right, folks, welcome to Nino's Corner.tv. This is going to make fluff tube. I'm with Timothy Alberino, uh, who just went on an expedition to Peru where there's, I guess, <laughs> what, what we're about to say here is very controversial. Alien assailants attacking villages with a, with advanced technology. Now, Timothy, this is this is a uh, this is right up my alley, man. I love stuff like this because I know a lot more is going on on this planet than we know of. Um, folks, stick around for this. This is gonna be one hell of a show. But first, health with Nino, folks. Health with Nino. When it comes to anti aging, we're all searching for a miracle pill which may never exist. But believe it or not, I may have found the next best thing. It's a special type of collagen, and it's more effective at maintaining skin elasticity, reducing visible signs of aging, and promoting youthful complexion than most all anti-aging products I've typically found on store shelves. Uh, tens of thousands of five-star reviewers can't be wrong. I'm one of them. Uh, simply place your order now and get 53% off all along many other free bonuses before they sell out. And they always sell out, folks. Get over, hit the link below and get started with some uh, collagen. Timothy, man, what an ordeal. We try, <laughs> we've tried to do this show like three times already. My, my, uh, my internet went out. Uh, I wasn't able to log back on for like an hour. And then I sent them emails. They weren't going through. It's been weird. This has been a weird, weird day. I don't know if they want, they don't want us broadcasting this or what's going on, but we made it. We're here. Timothy, how's it going? We're here. Thanks for having me on. This is wild. I've never experienced anything like this. Um, so, man, so how did you find out about this? And how did you, what made you want to get down there on this expedition to just, just start from zero and let's go and let's figure out what the hell's going on here? How, how did you even hear about this in Peru? Well, I would like to uh, just uh, correct something. I, I, I'm, I don't know if the assailants are extraterrestrial or human. I suspect that they are human, uh, nefarious humans with advanced technology. Um, this... Um, this incident began to go viral. Uh, this particular incident in this village in Peru went viral in July, mid to late July and then early August. Um, some videos surfaced of, of a group of villagers running around. It was a chaotic scene at nighttime. They were firing, discharging their firearms into the jungle. Um, and they were obviously, um, very nervous about something. So something had them in a state of panic. And then subsequent interviews with the Apu, the chief of the village, we learned that they believe that they were being assaulted by extraterrestrials with advanced technology. And apparently one of these beings or people attempted to abduct a 15 year old girl in the village uh, who they were able to save. And so that sort of kicked off this whole, they call it the Pelacara, um phenomenon pelacara means face peeler i'd say it's it's a legend in the jungle that's been around for at least 40 years i heard about it when i lived in the jungle sort of a wives tale but uh the people in the village were were saying that they were under attack by pelacaras and it started to spread to other villages and there were a bunch of other incidents that happened at the same period of time in other villages but the the first incident that sort of kicked off this whole thing occurred in San Antonio de Pintuyacu. Um, San Antonio? San Antonio de Pintuyacu. And so that's, uh, I lived in the jungle, uh, in the general region where this village is located. This village is located in Alto Nanay, uh, which is a region of Loreto, the department of Loreto, which is the Amazon jungle. And uh, they speak a uh, dialect of Spanish called Charapa. That's the kind of Spanish that I speak best. It's the first Spanish I learned um, living in the jungle. And so I'm obviously very interested in, uh, in matters pertaining to aliens and, and all things bizarre, especially as it relates to the Amazon. So my interest was piqued. A lot of people, a lot of my followers were asking me, begging me really to go and investigate. And nobody, I, I, I realized after about a month that nobody had undertaken an expedition to go and investigate what was happening in the jungle, the jungles of Peru. And so ultimately I decided to go and, and undertake such an investigation myself, such an expedition. And, and I was um, fortunate to have my friend, my colleague, Doug Thornton, who's an ex infantry marine and DHS, a rapid response team operator, accompany me 
and so uh, I made the arrangements for the expedition and and went up the river. How long were you there for? The whole expedition took about ten days, I think. But I was um, I was in the village for three days and two nights. Um, it takes two days to get to the village up the river. I chartered a riverboat, um, and it became apparent to me after contacting the village, it became apparent to me that these villagers were in dire need of supplies because they were no longer going out to their, what's called their chakras, which is their little farms around the village. They were no longer going out to their farms to harvest their out of fear? produce. I'm sorry? Out of fear? Were they scared? Out of is that fear, what? that's right. They were terrified. They were living in a state of terror. And so um, they were not harvesting their crops and they were in need of supplies. And so this investigation also became sort of a humanitarian effort. And I want to thank the, uh, the guys from Conduit Church. I reached out to a friend of mine, Jamie Brandenburg and, and Pastor uh, Darren Tyler from Conduit Church in, in Frank Franklin, Tennessee. And a group of guys there helped me to co-fund the expedition and we were able to purchase supplies. We provisioned the village with um rice and beans and sugar and other kinds of food items also medical supplies and uh doug thornton helped me um procure some strategic equipment for the village as well because the men were doing patrols every night they've been patrolling and um they've been patrolling um until about three in the morning with their shotguns and they were just poorly equipped to patrol that village at nighttime. So we brought them, we brought them radios so that they can communicate. We brought them high powered flashlights, um, thermal binoculars and night vision goggles with recording capabilities. Let me ask you this. Have you thought about trail cams? Because, you know, we I've been it. watching a lot of videos on YouTube with trail cams and they're catching all kinds of entities out in the forest. Uh, you know, things that we would have never believed before that ever existed, you know, like, uh, you know, apparitions, there's uh, these things called rakes, skinwalkers. Is that kind of what you suspect we're dealing with here? Could these be skinwalkers or do you, or extraterrestrials? What do you think these things are? Well, I don't, I can't say definitively what they are. I suspect that, as I said in the beginning, that they are nefarious human beings in possession of advanced technology um they there's there's any number of theories that i could um offer for example we could be dealing with a a human and non-human phenomenon some sort of a cooperation between factions these two factions um we could be dealing with some sort of and this is of course just rank speculation and and, and perhaps your audience will think it's a bit sensational but I'll offer it. Uh, we could be dealing with some sort of reptilian type entities. And the reason why I say that is because when I arrived to the village and began to conduct the investigation, by the way, I had a very warm welcome. I had an official invitation from the chief of the village who actually accompanied me. He, he met me in Iquitos and accompanied me, accompanied me up the river um, with some other guys from the village. So I was, I was invited to, to do this investigation by the, by the villagers. Very warm welcome. These are the Iquitu people. Um, a very ancient tribe there in in the Amazon, the Peruvian Amazon, and uh, we were received with. Uh, they gave us some traditional food and 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 traditional drink, and they and they performed a dance for us. So it was uh, it was a, it was a very as I said warm welcome. The traditional drink did that have anything to do with psychedelics or anything like that? No, no, it's it? masato. It's uh, masticated yuca. They the women masticate it and then they they chew it and then they spit it into like this trough and mash it up and then they um, and then they let it ferment in a bucket. They add some river water and it ferments and it's sort of a it's an alcoholic well, drink. A, and it's an alcoholic drink. Yeah, it's a it's it's a traditional drink that all these communities drink in the jungle, um, and it's you know most gringos don't drink masato. I do drink masato. I lived with the communities, and if you drink it, they it's it's sort of a rite of passage for a, a foreigner coming into their their village. You're you're sharing in their masato, and it's uh, it's very important for them. So, um, but when I started to conduct the interviews with these people, I really didn't know what I was what I was going to find. Um, I should say that the only interview that was conducted in the village previous to my visit were two police officers 
who came, they had to come and investigate the, the attempted abduction on this young 15 year old girl named Talia. Talia is her name. Now, we're, and, we're just uh, talking about one abduction, or is there casualties, or, or more abductions? Well, that, just... there were in other villages, but in this particular village where the whole thing began, uh, there was an attempted abduction of, of Talia. And so the police from Iquitos came, the main city there. Uh, they came up the river. They had a Navy escort, um, but, the, but, but the Navy didn't conduct the investigation. The police officers conducted the investigation. And... If I may say so, they conducted a piss poor investigation and they walked away. They concocted a ridiculous narrative. They said that the village was being assaulted by river miners who were in possession of state of the art jetpack technology. Preposterous. The villagers, I knew it was preposterous when they first uh, when they first published this this fabrication, Um, the Peruvian media picked it up, ran with the jetpack miner fabrication, and subsequently the, the, the media here in the United States also ran with it. So I knew, we're it, was, talking I, about I knew these, it was ridiculous. These, these beings are airborne. They're flying. They're, they're they're, in- they fly. Yes, they fly. There's no question about it. Um, so um, this is what I was told, okay? A, a, a summary of what I was told by the villagers. I, I, I conducted many interviews, talked to many of the people in the village, they all told me the same thing, basically. Okay, there was, there's very little variation in their testimonies. So, apparently the villagers had been assaulted, were assaulted. It, the phenomenon did not happen when I was there. It happened in from the mid-July to, let's say, around mid-August is when this was happening. Really the beginning of August. By the time I got there in late October, um, things had quieted down. But apparently they were being assaulted by, only at nighttime, mind you, by people who were dressed head to foot in black armored bodysuits. They also had helmets that were elongated, elongated helmets with almond shaped yellow, uh, almond shaped yellow tinted eye lenses. Um, these individuals, these assailants. What was the um, build on these? Did they have a human build or was they it more were like large? They build? were large. I'm, I'm okay. around, I'm, I'm six one. And, and all of the villagers said that they were at least my height, if not taller. In fact, some of them said that they were about seven and a half and even some to eight feet tall. So these are very large individuals. Um, they were entering the village. They were flying into the village, as, as crazy as this sounds, they were flying into the village on these circular hoverboards. Uh, so they were they were on top, standing on top of these circular hoverboards, which were silent. Circular hoverboards, and all they would see is the lights around the boards. The boards had a, an assortment of lights. They also had floodlights when they wanted to turn the floodlights on. You, you, could, you could not see the person on top of the board unless you put a flashlight on him. Then you would see this, the, the, the silhouette of a person dressed in black. Um, and they would land the, these, these platforms, these circular hoverboards, they would land them in the jungle between the trees and the openings. And then they would usually disembark from the platforms and make their way into the village. Now, what's really strange is that a, that more than a few of the villagers who confronted these guys face to face at nighttime with their flashlights encountered them not walking but floating they were floating a foot off the ground or a meter rather a meter off the ground and this is when they had disembarked from their hoverboards apparently and i had this from several villagers apparently they have these discs on the bottom of their boots if we can call them boots, the footwear, whatever they're wearing, they have these these discs, two discs, one in the front, like in the front of the shoe and one at the heel. And they can levitate with these discs. So they've disembarked from their hoverboards and now they're levitating on the discs. And um, some of the villagers told me that um, that they discovered their footprints. And their footprints were two circular discs. It wasn't like a regular footprint. It was like two discs, two circles next to each other. 
Were you so, able to take pictures of these footprints? Or no, this watch? happened back in July, and many it had rained a whole lot okay. since then. There were no the, then the villagers did did not think to take pictures of of, of the of the footprints. So, but so so you so we've got two things going on here. We've got these circular hoverboard platforms that they can they're very dexterous on these things they can they're they're very agile they can move around at high rates of speeds and and fly up into the air on their hoverboards when they disembark from their hoverboards they either walk or they float um by way of this of these technological apparatuses these discs on the bottom of their footwear um and they're able to perform some very incredible feats like they're very agile uh, they they can jump over houses. They can move. They're they're very agile, uh, both on the discs and off of uh, rather both on the platforms and and just by way of the discs on the bottom of their footwear. I, it's 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 my assumption that um, the circular the circular discs on the b- bottom of their shoes probably snap magnetically snap into the platforms the hoverboards. That's just my assumption. We do know that they activate the hoverboards. When they step on the hoverboards, they activate them by pressing something on their boots, and then the hoverboard is activated. So there's some sort of technology built into their into their footwear that activates the hoverboard. Um, they also have hard shell small backpacks, but they're not they're not uh, jetpacks. The backpack we we surmise that the backpacks are maybe battery packs. Propulsion. Yeah. Maybe it's the energy source. Maybe it's a small reactor. It's, but it's not a jetpack. The propulsion is happening on their shoes and on their discs. On their, well, it's anti gravity. It's like it's like alien technology. It's like reversing. It's, it, there's something very thing. interesting here. So, um, so apart from the fact that, and these assailants always come in pairs, always two by two. Okay, so they're always coming two by two. Now there may be several groups, several pairs at the same time making incursions into the village, but they always come in groups of two. Now, um, aside from the technology I just described, I was also told by several people in the village that they witnessed what can only be described as advanced aerospace vehicles silently hovering over the village. And now we're talking about UFO type craft silently hovering over the village. And, and they, and they, and again, a few different villagers drew the shape of this craft in, in the dirt and one drew it on an acrylic chalkboard. And by the way, all of everything I'm saying is in a video I produced on YouTube on my YouTube channel is Timothy Alberino. It's the latest video on there. Everything I'm saying, I did an after action report. Uh, Doug Thornton, who went with me, he we went channel. in with we went in with GoPro cameras. Uh, we wanted to be low key. We didn't want to bring in um, expensive camera equipment, so we went in with GoPro cameras. and And Doug recorded some of the interviews I did with these people, and I gave a summary, a, a after action report on my YouTube channel, Timothy Alberino. You can go watch it. It's right here. Um, you want me to play a little bit of it, Tim? Uh, people can just go and watch it. Uh, because it's going to be kind of hard to find the because I'm talking in, in between. I mean, you can see here you're sharing the screen that this is the Ikitu tribe receiving me here in in uh, in the village. That's when we arrived. I'm drinking my sato. My, there. My, my thing, my thing with this is, you know, this seems like they're just being terrorized because with this type of technology, they could wipe these people out. Well, so are they just trying to strike fear into these people? And also, throughout the history of these indigenous people, have they ever encountered anything like this in the no. history of this indigenous tribe? Uh, yes and no. This village has never been attacked by the Pelicata phenomenon, the face peeler phenomenon. Other villages have. So, is this the the generations old face peeler phenomenon, or is this something new? Now, these assailants did attempt to peel the face off of the fifteen year old girl Talia. So, um, but let me finish uh, describing this, these acorn shaped craft, because this is an important part of the phenomenon here. So, as I said, several villagers drew the craft in the, in the dirt and one on an acrylic chalkboard. And you can see that in the video. Um, it has sort of an acorn shape to it. They're big enough for two guys. It's, they're about the size of a small private jet or a large helicopter. And they, they have the ability to hover silently. In fact, the villagers saw them 
about 30 to 40 feet above their village. So we're not talking about some light in the sky in the distance. These things would hover over the village. One individual saw one of these craft, these acorn-shaped craft, as he was pulling up his nets at three in the morning, and suddenly uh, everything around him was lit up. He said, like, daytime. And he looked up, and there was this craft 30 feet above him. And what was interesting is he said it was transparent, like it had some sort of a mesh uh, it had the fuselage was like mesh almost, but he could see through it and he could see and he was looking straight up at it. So he's looking at the bottom of it. He could see two people inside, one sort of in the cockpit and one in the middle. And this thing hovered above him for an extended period of time. Uh, it has little stub, little, little stubby protrusions in the place of wings. And these protrusions can fold open. And when they do, they deploy a series of blinking lights. Several people told me this as well. The details were consistent by all the villagers. And then these craft can move away at high rates of speed. And, and they only make noise when they accelerate, just like the, the discs, just like the, uh, rather the, the hoverboard platforms. Uh, so uh, he said that, I asked him, did he see any propellers, any propulsion system? He said, absolutely not. There were no propellers and there was no propulsion system that, that was visible. Um, now it should be said that these villagers as you're seeing in the photos here that you're displaying uh, the, from my video, uh, these villagers, they're not, you know, they're not indigenous unco uncontacted tribes wearing, you know, grass skirts with blowguns. They were in, you know, 50 years ago, but now they're civilized. In fact, in this village of San Antonio, it's a very important, it's one of the last villages before just a vast wilderness of jungle. And so the government uh, established a communications outpost here. This village has a satellite uplink for internet. The villagers in this, the people in this village, they watch movies. They have the internet when they go to this building, when they go to this government building, they sit there and they go on, they have, they're at, they have Facebook, you know, they, they have, they're on social media and they watch movies. So these people are informed. They know what jetpacks are. They know what, you know, UFOs are. They've seen the Marvel movies. So they're not, they're very much aware of, they have this, um, um they have they have the of the pop culture awareness that we all have so they're not going to be confused by a helicopter they know they they watch all the same movies we do with helicopters they know what helicopters right. are they see military helicopters all the time um so uh it's very important to keep in mind that 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 whoever these people are they are in possession of advanced technology, including advanced aerospace vehicles that can but they've silently only hover. Seen these people, they've only seen these people in these kind of uh, uniforms, correct? In this type of gear? They haven't yes. Seen them. They're okay. wearing some sort of stealth body armor, okay? Whoever these assailants are, they're wearing stealth body armor and um, that maybe have some sort of cloaking capability as well. And they're bulletproof. The villagers have shot at them point blank range with 16 gauge shotgun. You know, there's bulletproof technologies out there that are conventional that our military uses, the Russians and so forth. And you can find those online. And they are in fact body suits, armored body suits, and they would be impervious to shotgun, a uh, shotgun blast. Now, one of the, uh, to birdshot, which is what these guys are using. Now, one of, the guys in the village told me that he confronted one of these guys that was he said he was hovering on his boots he wasn't on a platform he was just hovering off of these discs on the bottom of their shoes about a meter off the ground he, he discharged his shotgun right at the guy and it knocked him on his back but he just popped back up in the air and and accelerated off into the distance um there was no blood he didn't scream or anything like that he didn't shout uh so um it's very, very strange. Said, so let's go. Go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. So you said that these, the, they had elongated type of helmets, correct? Yes, they, they're, they're sort of elongated in the back, and that's why the villagers in the beginning were saying that these, that what they were seeing was reminiscent of the Green Goblin from the Spider-Man movie, that's what I because he sort of has an elongated helmet. Um, well, what about the Peruvian, the Peruvian skulls that they've dug up? You know, well, I don't know. Up. You know, that's all just speculation. No one, no one has seen the faces beneath the helmets. No one has seen the skin. Um, they've only seen. But Peru the... is known for these type of visitors, right? I mean, they, we associate Peru with uh, extraterrestrial visitations and a well, lot of Peru is, activity, correct? Peru is a very enigmatic place, and you have all kinds of weird stuff coming out of Peru all the time. 
Um, but but let, let's talk about Talia real quick, because this, can, this is going to sort of give us a little bit more insight into what we might be dealing with. So Talia, I interviewed Talia. Um, she was extremely traumatized. She has severe PTSD. The first time she saw me and Doug, she began to tremble from head to foot and cry and hide her face from us because the Pelacata legend, the face peeler legend, some of the indigenous people believe that it's gringos and, and they're organ harvesting gringos with advanced technology. That's what they'll say. But others will tell you they're extraterrestrials. Nobody, there's no consensus among the communities on who these people are. And even some villagers go vacillate back and forth in their own mind. And they say, well, these, these are, you know, gringos with advanced technology, but maybe they're also aliens. They don't know because they can't, there's no explanation. You know, how can human beings be doing this with this kind of technology? So nobody really knows, but there is this notion that maybe it's gringos, right? So uh, when Talia saw us, she was associating us with her assailants, right? And she was, she was having this reaction, this PTSD reaction. She did not want to talk to us, but we, her father told us to come to the house the next morning. We encountered her the first time in the plaza um, one evening. So the next day we went to her house after breakfast and, and eventually she, her father um, um, convinced her to, to speak with us. And she was just very, very traumatized. We, we felt very badly for this girl. She was trembling. And this is in the video on my YouTube channel. So um, Talia told me a very harrowing story. And, and briefly, this is what she said. Now, first of all, we're standing in her backyard. She's, she's in the spot where the encounter happened. Um, their, their home is not on the outskirts of the village it's sort of in the middle of the village so they're surrounded by their houses but between the houses there's this little gully and it's forested and there's some jungle in there okay and there's a little they have like a little thatched roof chicken coop in there and this is where the assault took place so talia it right after dark like right after dusk um talia is in her backyard and she's got this long stick and she's trying to knock down some fruit from a tree to to eat with her dinner and the, she gets a, the, a fruit falls to the ground she bends over to pick it up and she suddenly she notices some dry, some of the dry leaves on the ground start to rustle and she feels this gentle wind at her back she turns around to see what it is and she sees to her great shock she sees a person like i've described dressed head to foot in black armored bodysuit with the, with the helmet S surfing up to her and I say surfing because she went like this so the guy was like surfing on one of these platforms circular platforms he surfed up to her up this little hill landed the platform next to her and grabbed her seized her from behind he put his hand over her mouth and he seized her then she saw another guy dressed identically on a circular platform coming up the hill he landed in front of her and grabbed her legs then they lifted her off and they floated her behind this chicken coop. And, and to make a long story short, they proceeded to, they, they made some, they mixed a solution in their hands and, and sucked up this solution in a nasal syringe and shot it up her nose. This was to incapacitate her. So whatever this solution was, it was to make her docile so that they could do what they were about to do, which is, they took some cream, a different cream from a larger tube, and proceeded to smear it on her face. She said her face instantly went numb, and then they took out this little device, which Doug and I think is a, um, is a laser scalpel. It's about this big, you know, maybe five inches with a little blade, but we think it's a laser scalpel based on the, dis the, the descriptions. And, and they began to cut her face under here under her neck. They were going to cut her face off. Now, Talia says that she heard these individuals speak. She describes one of them as, she refers to one of them as the gringo. And she said the gringo, now she never saw the face, but she says the gringo was taller than me. The other one she calls the Peruvian, or I call the Peruvian because for reasons that will become apparent. The Peruvian was about my height, but he was smaller than what the guy she calls the gringo, okay? Now, the reason why she calls him the gringo, and I'm calling the other one the Peruvian, and the gringo is the one who initially floated up the hill and grabbed her from behind, is because she heard them speaking 
The gringo spoke broken Spanish, okay, with an accent. The other guy spoke regular Spanish, like a Peruvian, she said. Okay, so that's why we're, we, we refer to them as the gringo and the Peruvian. So as they're smearing this cream on her face, she heard the, gring, the Peruvian say to the gringo, who was smearing it on her face from behind, the Peruvian guy says, we're assuming, by the way, that these are people, says, be careful, don't put too much on her face, you're going to ruin the flesh. And then she later explained to me, because I had a, a subsequent conversation with her, she later explained to me that what she thinks they meant was, it was something about how if, if they apply too much of this cream, it's going to cause the flesh to stick to the skin when they attempt to cut the skin off, when they go to cut this, the face off. Something to that effect. That's what she told me. And so they applied this cream to her face. They proceed to cut her face, but she starts to struggle. And she starts to lift up the mask, the helmet of the guy behind her, because he's got her from behind and she's starting to lift up his helmet. And he starts to freak out a little bit because he does not want her to see his face, right? And so during this altercation, they drop her. And so his hand comes off her mouth and she's able to scream. She screams at the top of her lungs. Now you have to understand that the village is already in a state of vigilance. This was not the first incursion. The first incursion happened earlier. So they already knew that somebody's trying to get into the village for whatever reason. So all of the villagers are in a heightened state of vigilance at this point and are sitting on their porches with their guns and flashlights. So when Talia screams, they're ready. They oh. come running. The neighbors come running and her brother comes running and they got their flashlights. And I talked to her father and some of the neighbors and they, they, when they came to, when they got to the scene and they got there in a matter of seconds, when they got to the scene, this is what they said they saw. They saw Talia laying on the ground. Her face is bloodied from the laceration. She's laying on the ground and her assailants are floating on these platforms. And Talia says that after she screamed, the Peruvian assailant yelled out to the gringo, let's go, let's go in Spanish. Let's go, let's go. And the gringo said, no, we can't just leave her here. And he proceeded to grab her by the hair and drag her up the hill. But eventually he let go when the villagers came. And this is what the villagers saw. They saw Talia they laying there. They... Well, they saw her laying there, bloodied up. And they saw these guys on these platforms like this, sort of maneuvering between the trees. And they maneuvered. And the, and the villagers have their flashlights right on them. They see them. You know, they're only, a, they're only you know, 15 feet away at this, 20 feet away. They got their flashlights and they're yelling, there they are, there they are. And these guys maneuver to where there's an opening in the trees and they shoot up in the air. What? And Talia's laying there bloodied on the ground. So her brother and the other neighbors pick her up and they bring her into her house and she's now unconscious. Long story short, her father brought her to a different village to where they had a better medical post and they stitched her up and or, or they treated her. I don't even think it needed oh, stitches. How many just, stitches did she get? I said, I don't think it needed stitches. I think they just because I looked at her wound and it was almost faded. So um, they just treated it with antibiotic cream, probably. But Talia's face was, was swollen for. For eight days and her whole body swelled up, actually, she had a reaction to whatever they put on her face. Um, now, Talia is the only one who told us that she heard them speak. So uh, we have to keep in mind that A, Talia was, is highly traumatized, so she may be confabulating some of what she's remembering. Confabulation means that when you have gaps in your memory, confabulation means that you fill in the gaps with what seems logical to you. That's called confabulating. People do it yeah. all the time. And right. it's and it's common when people have a traumatic experience and they it can't happened remember. Happened to me when I got my throat sliced. I I had to make sense of it, and I that's I understand this. You're right. You invent you invent the connective but, tissue yep. between the 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 gaps in the memory, right? So, um, she might be confabulating. Number one, number two. Whatever is they shot up her nose, she might have been in altered state of consciousness at that point. You know, coming in and out of consciousness, whatever. So. I'm not saying that Talia isn't correct and that they didn't speak. It's just an, it's just an anomaly. We didn't hear it from anyone else. Um, they may or may not have spoken. According to Talia, they did. 
if they did speak, the one with the Spanish accent, uh, rather with a gringo accent, they spoke in Spanish, one with the gringo accent, then we are 100% dealing with human beings. Now, right. we may be dealing with a subspecies of human beings. You mentioned the elongated skull people earlier. I don't know. This is all, of course, just sp highly speculative. Who knows? But we're dealing with some kind of, of human you still have hybrid. you have limited data you went there with gopros though correct yes we did and by the way it's important to note that the villagers set up traps around their village okay well, why not trail cams why don't you go well back they don't have trail cams and and you we, we didn't bring trail cams because we were we were at our limit in terms of what we could bring we just we just and, and we only had about a week to prep for but this are thing. you open to doing that now would you go if Maybe yes, but they're, they're not experiencing the phenomenon anymore in that village. It's, it's, I'm, in, I'm in active contact with them, and everything has calmed down. So um, what we, get, we gave them night vision goggles with, uh, with recording capabilities. Okay, So if they record, if they record anything, they're going to send it to us, So, to me. Um, so the villagers set up traps around their village, and the traps in the jungle consist of like a tube, and they, they rig it up, and it's got a, it's got a, it's got a shotgun uh, shell inside of it and and when the trip line is triggered it, it it discharges the shell right now they modified the shells so they are using 16 gauge bird shot they would take the bird shot and they would melt the pellets and create little slugs out of them so they so so they would modify the the pellets and create little slugs and that's what they did because they realized that they're not you know the bird shot isn't working so they created you know, more powerful ammunition and and they set up nine of these traps around the village. These are very dangerous traps. People in the jungle, all you know, kids walk into them. They're really stupid, but people use them to catch small game, right? And um, but they this time they set them up to catch the assailants. And so they they usually put the traps about a foot off the ground to catch you know the small deer and the the rodents and stuff. They put them higher this time. So the traps were set about about thigh level their thigh level but for a guy my size it'd be knee and so they their whole their mentality was they knew these guys were tall so they wanted to sh take them out and of the knees. yeah so they wanted to sh either shoot their craft or take them out of the knees knees these are very clever people by the way very good shots with their shotgun okay they they, they take out, i've seen them i've lived with these kind of people they can take out monkeys jumping from tree to tree you know with their shotgun so wow. um so they set these traps up unfortunately a woman from the village wa accidentally walked into one and, and it shot, it, it blew a hole in her thighs. She, she was treated and recovered. Very nasty wound. Um, and they would hear the traps going off at night. So the assailants were triggering the traps, maybe just for the fun of it, because they didn't catch any. And there was no shrapnel, there was no blood. So whoever these assailants were, were triggering the, tra the traps. Um, it's important to understand we are not dealing with a paranormal phenomenon here. These are physical beings, very likely, in my estimation, human beings with advanced technology. This is not paranormal. This is not supernatural. This is a physical phenomenon. Um, and these kind of incursions are happening. Because they're easy, I guess they would consider them easy targets, easy prey. Uh, are they? Well, well, here's the thing. Okay, so the, the police officers who concocted this stupid jetpack miner uh, story, they said that the miners were using these jetpacks and pretending that they were face peelers to try and drive the natives off of their land so that they can do whatever, you know, uh, uh, mine the river. River miners, they're not, they're river miners, so they can mine the river there, the Pintuyaku, there in front of the village. We know that that's not true anymore. We know that that theory is not accurate. Why? Because we went apart from San Antonio de Pintuyaco after we concluded our investigation there. And one of the reasons why I only stayed for three days in the village rather than like say four or five is because I wanted to go down to Nauta where they also had experienced the phenomenon. I went to Nauta. Now Nauta is a two hour drive from Iquitos. It's the only place you can drive from Iquitos, okay? Iquitos is the main city. You have to fly into Iquitos to access the, that, that region. There are no roads that go to Iquitos. You have to get there either by flight or by boat, by river, okay? So either in the air or via the river. It's one of the most isolated cities in the world, if not the most isolated city in the world. Um, 
you can only, the only place you can drive to is Nauta. Nauta is another large city. It's got about 35,000 inhabitants. So the, San Antonio Pinto Yaku, the village only has about 200. Nauta has 35,000. Okay. So this isn't some little village and the road from Iquitos to Nauta is paved. This village is a modern, I mean, rather, this is a city. This is a jungle city of 35,000 in, inhabitants. And the same phenomenon was happening there. Okay. You're not driving 35,000 inhabitants out of this established jungle city. That's not the objective here. So we can put that to bed. The objective is not to drive them off their land. Okay. Because they were, they were, they were, whatever, <laughs> whatever their objective was, they were, they were in the city of Nauta. Right. It's abductions so, then, right? I'm sorry. It's for abductions then. Well, so whatever they're doing, it's not to drive people off the land, and it's not to it's not to mine the river or something. Um, and so the people in Nauta, same thing. They saw the same thing. They saw these these assailants dressed in black, armored body suits on these circular hoverboards. Same phenomenon. Um, they discharged their firearms at them, but now in Nauta. Keep in mind, Nauta, you've got military, military base, and, and you've got police officers who are armed with automatic weapons. So now we're not dealing with just villagers with shotguns that are held together with rope. No, now we're dealing with military grade weapons. So these assailants don't care. They don't care. It's, they're not attacking the village in, in, in San Antonio de Pintu Yaku because it's isolated. If that were the case, they would not have attacked Nauta, and they did. So now they're braving, they're risking automatic weapon fire, right? Um, they're risking helicopter response. There's a Navy base. I mean, there's Navy and Army bases there. Okay, so, um, so, so people need to keep that in mind. I went to Nauta to investigate, and this is in the video I produced on YouTube. I went to Nauta to investigate a particular video that was taken of... It, again, it's at nighttime, people are in a chaotic, it's a chaotic scene, and they're flashing their light at this tree, and they're, and they're shouting, there it is, there it is, and there's something in the tree, and you can see it in the video, there's something in the tree, and now, I analyzed the vid video, and I speculated that maybe, possibly, we're looking at some sort of an entity in this tree, and I explained that in the video, and I show what I think it might be in the video that I produced on YouTube, um, but I wanted to go during the day to that spot so I could get a better understanding. And I went and I talked to the people who were there, who were there when the video was filmed. And although I think, I think that there were several videos filmed and the people that I talked to were witness to a different incident. But nevertheless, I was at the spot where this occurred and I got to see it from, from daytime. And all I can say is, if indeed what we're looking at is an entity, and for those who are wondering what I'm talking about, go watch my video, you'll see what I mean. If what we're looking at is an entity, it's very large. It's seven to eight to nine feet tall. It has to be because of the yeah. distance of the trees and, the, and I saw the location in the day, during the day. So, so I, I did, we investigated two locations, San Antonio de Pintu Yaku and Nauta. And because we investigated these two locations, I can say definitively that the objective of the assailants is not to drive anybody off of the land. That is, again, we can put that to, to, to bed. And that these assailants are willing to risk automatic weapon fire and responses by the Navy, the Army with helicopters and whatever. Okay. So uh, these guys are very bold. And in Nauta, not only did they see um, presumably the same acorn shaped craft. I don't know. Presumably they did, but we know, we suspect because of their descriptions, they saw discs hovering. Okay. They were seeing discs. So this adds a little bit more, uh, complexity to the phenomenon. So, so that's why I say that we may be dealing with a human slash non-human phenomenon, a phenomenon in which there is some sort of cooperation between a human faction with advanced technology, possibly, probably re reverse engineered alien technology, working with a non-human faction. For what reason? For what purpose? I don't know, except to say I know it's not what the media has said. And these 
this is advanced technology and it absolutely is happening. It's not being imagined. It's not a bunch of dumb native people imagining it. It is happening. In fact, close to Nauta in a different village up the river, I think it's called Bagazan. I don't remember, or Baga or Bazan. I don't remember the exact name of the village. A young boy was assaulted by something. They say it was a pelicata assault, a face peeler assault. I don't know. I wasn't able to independently verify it. However, the the boy's testimony and pictures and video of him are all over the internet. It was aired on on in in Iquitos on their on their news. I I saw the I saw the story, and very graphic, and it wasn't blurred. The boy had lacerations to his neck, very deep, very graphic, very bloody. He almost bled out and died. They thank God they were able to save his life in Nauta. They brought him to Nauta, and they were able to stitch him up. He lost a lot of blood. He got you know he got some blood, and very graphic, very graphic. Now, the boy says he was assaulted by Pelacatas, and he gives the same description, dressed in black, floating, the whole, the whole deal. I did not talk to the boy myself. I want to. I, had, I have not had the opportunity to interview him. But obviously, something very, very nefarious is going on in the Peruvian Amazon. By the way, during this period of time, from, let's say, July to August, other things were happening uh, in this general region of the jungle. There was a group of students um, who were out for whatever reason in the jungle, and they all witnessed collectively a strange being walking through the forest. Okay, also in other villages, they uh, villagers were assaulted by UFOs that were deploying some sort of laser beam, trying to lift them off the ground. Other villages say other villagers say they were assaulted by people just like the descriptions of the Pelicata guys with dressed head to foot in black body armor suits, but they were hit with laser beams that incapacitated them and caused some other problems for them. Okay, this is all part of the story. I only invested. I only went to San Antonio de Pintuyaco because that's where it began. That's what it, the phenomenon. Does it seem to you like maybe this is how they're, they're experimenting with this technology on these villagers? I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what they're doing, why they're doing. I mean, I know what they're doing. I don't know why they're doing it. Um, uh, they, they, they may be harvesting something. Maybe they're, maybe they're heart. Maybe they're interested yeah. in glands that are attached to the face. Um, maybe they're using the faces for something. Maybe it, does it have to do with artificial intelligence? Does it have to do with uh, a a non-human nefarious? let's call it deep state group. Um, I can tell you it's not cartel. The, yeah. the, we, we, we originally suspected we were dealing with cartels, by the way. That was our, our initial reaction when we got to the village. But, but we were able to uh, discount that theory because the cartel does not have acorn-shaped uh, right. uh, yeah, craft kind of that can hi hover silently. Technology that would outdo the government. Exactly. The cartel has military grade weapons the cartels in peru all over the world they have military grade weapons they have the same sort of weaponry that that we use in iraq and afghanistan right. yes they do they have they have probably even some of these stinger type uh ballistic systems to take down helicopters and stuff i'm sure they have they have conventional weaponry they have helicopters they have all of it they probably don't have fighter jets right they probably don't have jets but the cartels, aside from jets, short of jets, they probably have night vision goggles, all this kind of stuff. They don't have this kind of technology. They don't have um, advanced aerospace vehicles. Had they, if they did have this, we would see it deployed. They wouldn't hesitate to use it if they did have it. So it's not cartels. It's something worse. Okay, it's something um, that is very reminiscent. I always forget the gentleman's name of a whistleblower that Dr. Stephen Greer brought forth uh, at a um, a press um, conference in Washington, D.C. a couple of years ago. I, I always forget this, and I'm sure you guys will blast this in the comments. Yeah, but they will. <laughs> uh, I, I think the guy's name is Martinez. I can't remember. I listened to his, it was, he had a very compelling story. I won't go through the whole thing here, but he basically encountered humans in Indonesia, I believe it was, humans in possession of advanced aerospace technology, a hovering disc. Uh, and it was sort of like a paramilitary group that had it. It just technology. seems to me that they're making so many accidents, almost like they're learning this technology and experimenting with, experimenting with it on the villagers because it's easy. They're easy prey. 
Does that I make think sense? they're using it, and I and I agree with you, but I think they're using it for organ harvesting, sex trafficking. I think they're using it for the worst yeah. possible things that we can imagine. I I I, I think that's uh, you're 100 on that. I'm just wondering. Uh, it's very nefarious, obviously, and I'm wondering if they're just experimenting with this stuff on the indigenous people right now, which they will use on maybe later when they. And then this is just a thought, and just I'm just throwing this out there. Maybe when they try to do this, because uh, we know they're getting ready to uh, push this alien agenda, alien card that's coming. Maybe they're going to use it for bigger targets like cities. I don't know. Maybe they're experimenting right now with the indigenous people as kind of like a scrimmage, a trial run to see if they can do it on bigger cities and and push this alien card. Have you ever thought about that? It's possible. But keep in mind that this is that this phenomenon is at least 40 years old. The Pelacara. Now, it's not ancient. I know that for sure. I talked to the elderly people. I talked to the young people. And I found out that the elderly people said, no, this was not happening when we were kids. This started to happen when we were adults. So you're looking at a phenomenon that started sometime in the 80s, um, the face peeler phenomenon. Now, is this the face peeler phenomenon? Or is, is this a updated version of that phenomenon? Or is this a phenomenon that wants to mimic that wants right. people to think that they're face peelers when actually they're there for something else. Are these guys taking trophies? Is this just like the Predator movie? They're there to take their trophies. They're doing something else, and on their free time, they're going and trying to get trophies. Who knows? It literally could be anything. Um, all we know is that the phenomenon is real. It's not imagined. The details are consistent. Okay, the details are consistent, and we're not dealing with conventional hovercraft technology. So people are going to drop a bunch of this, these, these links in the comments. They always do yeah. Yeah. linking to the state of the art hovercraft technology that we have today, people flying around on these boards, but maybe it's an upgraded version of that, but it's not that I don't think we're dealing with propulsion, uh, uh, air propulsion propellers. I think we're dealing with some sort of anti-grav technology, uh, zero point technology, something like this maybe electrogravitic technology. It is not what you see on YouTube. That stuff is super noisy. It only flies for 10 minutes. Yes, it's pretty impressive, but it's not that. So everybody that, just- That little to... girl they didn't hear it approach her. She didn't hear it approach no, her. She no. felt the breeze and then they were there. That's right. So is it an upgraded version of that stuff? Maybe. Is it military grade of what people link to on YouTube? And I forget the name of those hoverboard craft. There's several. Maybe, but it's not that. It's not what that French guy invented. So don't bother uh, linking that stuff. I've seen it all. It's not any of that. Now, I will say this. Talia does, she, to the closest thing that she can liken what she encountered to is one of those modern hoverboard. I think specifically the one that was invented by the French guy. It's a, it is a circular platform. It has these wires on it. Um, the boots, by the way, are built into that platform, but she's, that is the closest thing. It's not exactly what she saw, but it is the closest thing to what she saw. And you'll see a video of her online of her holding up the cell phone with one of these guys that, that with one of the, the, those, those uh, conventional, I say conventional because it's in the marketplace, one of those um, hoverboard craft. She said that, she told me that's the closest thing to what she saw, but there's a lot of discrepancies, okay? So it's something in the ballpark of that, but using a different propulsion system. So that's what people need to keep, keep, keep in mind. Those hoverboards, the state-of-the-art hoverboard technology that exists in the commercial sector is extremely noisy, okay? Number one, it's very noisy. Number two, uh, it doesn't account for the acorn shaped craft and it doesn't account for the discs on the bottom of the shoes. It doesn't right. account for the fact that these guys can hover silently, hover around silently. It, it, so it doesn't fit the bill. Okay. Is it an upgraded version of that? Uh, a, a, a deep state military upgrade from that? Black ops, maybe the black ops guys have these, this technology. That's possible. Uh, that's absolutely possible. Okay. But it's not that it's not exactly that the, sort of the technology two were, the two that were almost abducted the little girl and the little boy both in two towns you know one with a thirty thousand population the other one is a smaller village are there abductions that the, that have not come back have they taken people that have oh not yes oh yes there's a there's a video and i have this on my youtube channel uh there's a video on my youtube channel i'm trying to rem remember the name of it because 
people are going to want to see that when they hear this. So I'll pull it up and get the name of it. Um, there's a video on my YouTube channel called, um, it's called Aliens Attack Village in Peru. It almost has a million views. It was, it was uh, age restricted by YouTube precisely because I included in this video footage of a, a, a young man, probably early 20s, whose face has been completely peeled off. Wow. And I have the unblurred uh, version of it in that video. It's very hard to find anywhere else, by the way. That's why YouTube age restricted my video and took it out of the algorithm. It'd probably have 3 million views by now if they didn't. But um, this individual had his face peeled. Now, <clears throat> I could not verify online if this had happened in the same region of San Antonio de Pintuyacu. However, the villagers in San Antonio de Pintuyacu told me that that incident did happen in that region of the jungle. I cannot independently verify that, but that's what they said. They absolutely assured me that that incident happened in their region of the jungle. This individual's face was peeled off. It is not the result of depredation from predators. It's not piranhas. People say, oh, piranhas do that. Yes, piranhas can peel your skin to the bone, no question about it. But if you notice in this individual in the video, where his skin is removed around his neck, it's a very clean cut. Yes. And piranhas nick the bone and they don't right. leave. A this very is like clean surgical. Bone. This is precise. It's a surgical cut. It's not piranhas. Um, yes, piranhas can strip you to the bone, no question about it. But they're not going to stop at the face, number one. They're going to continue to consume the rest of the body. And they're not going to make this clean cut. That's not going to happen. Piranha's teeth are like saws, okay? So it's not piranha, it's not depredation. Um, so yes, there have been fatalities and other people have been harmed by the face peeler phenomenon this year. In the village of San Antonio de Pintuyacu, only Talia was harmed. There were uh, other attempted incursions and so forth, but the villagers were able to stave them off with their shotguns but, but because right they now, were in a high state of vigilance. But right now it's calm. Right, right, right now, now it's calm. It's This phenomenon has moved on. It, it already moved on by the time I got there. Okay, so we hope to catch it. We stayed up to three in the morning, all right? And for people who criticize me for not staying in the vig village longer, number one, uh, it takes a lot of money to get there and, yeah. and to stay yeah. there. I had a riverboat with me. I had contracted two Navy active duty operators, Peruvian guys to go with me. This is a massive expense. Okay. So right, I'm staying course. as long as my budget allows. Number one, number two, I had to go on a, I had a trip to Guatemala with my oldest son programmed before I ever decided to go to Peru and I was not going to jeopardize that father son trip with my my not. oldest son. So so people who think I should stay there longer, go yourself if you want to if you think somebody should stay. <laughs> yeah, go, exactly. go ahead and go. I, I I'll give you the I, I'll, I'll I'll contact the village for you. Go your go by yourself if you think that you can go do a better job than me. So um you better speak charapa and drink masato though. I, I can tell you that. So um, the point is that I was in the village long enough to conduct every every uh, interview um, to go to all the locations where the village where the assailants were encountered. We stayed up um, two nights till three o'clock in the morning uh, with we had thermal vision uh, cameras, night vision cameras. We were ready to capture the phenomenon. By the way, um, uh, Doug Thornton, again, who is infantry marine and uh, my my Peruvian Navy guys and myself, we trained the um, we trained the villagers, the the guys that were doing patrols. We trained them. Doug and 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 the Navy guys trained them, and I translated trained them to uh, how to properly uh, carry around these shotguns because they were just waving around willy nilly. I mean, they're uh, going to end up shooting one of it was one. They're going to end up uh, uh, having some accidents with these guns and probably not now because they did gun safety with these guys. Number one, because all the guys have shotguns, right? So gun safety, but they also taught them to patrol in a column, a military column. And we taught them how to use the technology we brought. So we, we taught these guys how to patrol in a column uh, Doug divided the village into six sectors with six um, with six radios uh, so that they can communicate, right? So that they can, they can divide the village into sectors and communicate and patrol the village in sectors. Um, 
We taught them how to use the night vision goggles with recording capabilities. So they're walking, so they're, uh, they, they, they're now fully equipped with these goggles and the thermal binoculars we gave them. Um, and what's the other thing we gave them? We gave them, oh, and the, the high powered flashlights. So now every night these villagers, and before we left, they were doing this. We, these guys had it down. I mean, they really put this into action and we watched them. We observed them at nighttime patrolling in the way that in the manner that we taught them with the technology it was very impressive we were very impressed with these dudes how quick they picked it up how serious they were about it the apu the village his name is uh jairo reategi he's a great dude he's a true leader and he had these guys patrolling like a bunch of badasses but, yeah. but before we ever left the village they were communicating with the radios they were deploying the high powered flashlights. They had guys up in the tower with the night vision goggles, you know, the recording capability. I mean, these dudes had it down. They, they've taken it to another level. Yes. So so I doubt that they're going to experience another Pelakata incursion into their village. I think that the, the technology we gave them and how we trained them is going to act as a deterrent for any future incursion. So I don't expect them to capture the phenomenon because I don't think these guys are going to, are, are at this point going to, they're going to hit a different village. Why are they going to go yeah, 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 to the right. village where they got night vision goggles and, you know, and so forth. So I'm sure our presence was known by whoever these assailants are. I'm sure they saw us in the village. I think our um, interview I'm, was known. <laughs> <laughs> so the point is that, you know, uh, we were there long enough to do the investigation, to, to train the villagers, to stay up a couple nights until um, three o'clock in the morning, waiting for the phenomenon to occur, although we realized it wasn't going to occur. We completed everything we were there to do. Staying in that village any longer would have accomplished nothing. And I know that for sure, because since we departed, nothing has happened. And right. also, we wanted to go down to Nauta and conduct a village. We wanted to spend a day in, in, in Nauta to conduct an investigation. So that's why we did what we did. That's why it was in the time frame. And, uh, and we did the best we could with the time we had and, and with the finances me, uh, that we had. Let me get everyone to go to your channel, Timothy Alberino. Here it is. He has all the films here, all the uh, videos here. Peru Aliens Attack Village, Peru Alien Attack Expedition. That Peru Alien Attack Expedition report is the one that uh, we're talking about here. So, um, Okay, so this one, Peru uh, Aliens, that's, that's where you can see the, the, the field videos, face. Bro. Yeah. Wow. Wow. This is big. You can Man. still see the thumbnail there. And, yep. um, it, and that's real. That's real. And that's what we say. When we say face peeler, pela cara, that is what we're talking about. And that wow. happens. It is a real phenomenon. It is not imagined. Okay. And, uh, and again, I want to stress, I am not saying, now the villagers said that these were aliens, some of them. Uh, half the village told me they were aliens. Half the village told me they were, they were gringo human, uh, human organ harvesters. Um, and we there is no the consensus. Yeah, the technology is so advanced, though. That's why they would think they're alien. Exactly. Th th that's exactly why they would. Now, what do I think? Uh, as I told you earlier, Open. my my I just had my video playing there for a second. Sorry. Um, as I told you earlier, I believe my hypothesis is that they are nefarious humans with reverse engineered alien tech and possibly potentially working with a non-human faction. That's my hypothesis. Um, as, as sensational as that may seem, based on what I know, based on the interviews I conducted, that's my hypothesis. Now, there are people, and I've noticed this in the comments uh, in, in my video, who think that, <clears throat> who think that, the, that these villagers are just making it up. No, 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 okay? They're not. Because you would have to have all the villages making it up. And, yeah. now to, and now Iquitos, by the way, I forgot to mention, Iquitos has now experienced, Iquitos is a huge jungle city, okay? Everybody would have to be in on it with the same details, telling the same stories, okay? No, they're not making it up. It's illogical. That hypothesis is illogical. They're, they're experiencing a physical phenomenon, probably exactly what they're describing. These guys who are dressed in these black bodied armored suits who have the ability to hover around on these craft and fly around in these acorn shaped craft or, or perhaps even discs, um, saucers. So um, the phenomenon is real. I cannot stress that enough. It's not imagined. 
And uh, it's, it's very uh, ignorant and arrogant for people to assert that these people are making this up. They're living in terror. The Talia is here is her life has been ruined. She cannot interact normally. The, the Apu of the village and her father, I was talking to the, uh, the chief and, uh, and, and her father about her, and they were just lamenting how she used to be this cheerful, happy little girl, you know, a 15-year-old girl. Um, and now she's totally, her psyche has been ruined. I mean, the girl is, she's got such severe PTSD, she can't interact anymore. She's just, she's in depression she's 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 having a very hard time recovering by the way and i'm not saying this to to aggrandize myself but i want people to know that that we didn't just go in to do this callous investigation so that we could you know make a youtube video i paid for talia to 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 go down the river to a psychiatrist in in Iquitos. that was the what that was suggested by the medics in the other village she needs to see a psychiatrist in Iquitos, and i I financed her to be able to do that, her and her father. I mean, so, how do you ever get over trauma like this? This is something that's, it's like off world trauma. I mean, this is, man, this uh, is, she, like, you know, I mean, uh, I, I, we were in tears. Doug and I were in tears yeah. talking to this girl. Uh, Doug showed her pictures of his daughters because she was very afraid of us. And we, we, we ultimately, after we, we interviewed her, she, we invited, we invited her to go back down to Iquitos with us on the boat, her and her father. Um, but uh, but they preferred to go down. She was just too traumatized. She couldn't be around us for long periods of time like that. So uh, she did come on the boat and we did uh, get to sit down and talk to her a, a, a little bit more and her brother and her father. Um, and and she did sort of warm up to us after a while. And and so that was good. But um, she's very traumatized. And in the video, I say that she's trembling. She is. OK, you can't see it on that crappy, you know, GoPro. You, but if you're standing next to her, you would see her trembling, trembling the whole time. Um, and so uh, anyway, you don't get that PTSD the rest of her life. I mean, this and you is... don't you don't you don't just invent that kind of trauma. You don't just no, invent no. it. Something happened to that girl. Precisely what she said happened to her. That's what happened to her. And for anybody to say she's just making it up, people are now saying. And I don't usually get, you know, I don't usually get. Uh, uh, I don't pay much attention to stupid comments on social media, but because I know Talia and because I know the trauma that this village has gone through, it, it's sort of personal to me now. And people are saying that this was a this because she's wearing a TikTok T-shirt. People are saying that this was a publicity stunt no. for, her, for TikTok. That is so freaking ignorant. These people wear whatever T-shirts they get, whatever they can get their whatever cheap T-shirts yeah. they find in the You're market. You're letting the trolls get to you too much, man. They don't care <laughs> I, what's on the T-shirt. They don't <laughs> care. She probably picked that T-shirt up because it was cheaper. Her dad bought it for her in Iquitos because it was a cheap T-shirt. They probably her dad probably doesn't even know what TikTok is. She does, I'm yeah, sure. No. Her dad probably doesn't even know what TikTok is, and I guarantee you he's the one who bought the T-shirt for. Her. So right. people need to stop with these ignorant comments about this village and these villagers um because it's it's they, they've they've gone through trauma and and this girl has been traumatized she has severe ptsd and and the notion that these people are making it up is so ignorant it's ignorant and uh it it's just it's 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 just it's i take it personal at this point well timothy i i gotta say this has been one hell of a podcast my my dance is gonna eat this up i hope they all go to your channel i'll show it one more time folks look at his channel here go to it subscribe uh this is uh this is uh timothy's channel right here uh timothy alberino alberino uh man wow. you can subscribe wow. to my mailing list too on my on my website timothyalberino.com uh, I don't know if, you know, at some point in time, uh, YouTube's going to nuke my channel. I don't know, but, um, uh, I, mean, you people, strikes. Uh, I don't, I don't, but they've taken my channel down before I had to restart and I didn't yeah. have any strikes. They just literally wiped it clean overnight. Here you are with back up to 201,000 subscribers. So, uh, yeah, I've got about 2000. 200,000 subscribers right now, but it doesn't matter. YouTube could literally just wipe it out yeah. overnight. So, um, that's why I encourage people to sign up on my mailing list and to track with me on Twitter, X, and uh, Instagram. Perfect. Tony, thank it's you just, for joining me, my it's man. It's just at Timothy Albrino, by the way, my handle on, on social media. You got it. Let's keep in touch and let me know if you head back down there for another expedition. I would love to know about it. 
I'd love to uh, bring you back on again and talk about it. So thank you for stopping on uh, Nino's Corner, bro. Thank you for having me, David. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, what what a, I, if the folks only knew the trouble we had to go through just to even have this podcast, it was crazy. Yeah. I knocked out my internet. I couldn't get my emails to them. It was crazy. But, That's kind uh, of becoming it, par for the course for me uh, recently. Crazy. It, I've never experienced that. But anyway, thanks, Tim. Let's keep in touch. All right, brother? Thank you. You got it.